business here, finances, assets, strategy and communications. Mr Mayor, we all know the financial challenges that we face and the really tough decisions that we will all have to take. And I would like to say at the outset how much I appreciate the thoughtful scrutiny that our overview and scrutiny committees are currently giving to some of our savings proposals. This report gives the position that we are facing and it gives it bluntly and with no frills. And that's how it should be. It should be like that because we simply can't hide from the fact that we will receive £25 million less by way of government grant to deliver broadly the same services over the next few years. And that's on top of the £25 million grant cut that we've already had to absorb. Uh, members can refer to table, the table on page 101 for the, for the, for the full uh, implications. <coughs> Mr Mayor, the other thing that has become increasingly apparent, and I do believe that this is an unexpected consequence of government decisions and not another stick to bash councils with, is the impact on our finances of changes to business rates. So on top of the reductions in grants that we've already received, on top of the reductions in grants that we expect to come, we've had to put aside £6 million to fund possible successful business rate appeals that are currently in the system. Uh, that is, business rate appeals where the rates were paid uh, before the localisation of the non-domestic rates. Some of those appeals going back as far as 2005. And that's on top of having to find an extra £2.5 million uh, following the closure of Tilbury Power Station. As I've said, I really don't believe that that was the deliberate intention of government, and I've written to the Secretary of State asking him to look at this aspect, and I will of course report back to members uh, as that has progressed. But Mr Mayor, the upshot is that with this, and with inflation, we're looking at having to, to save somewhere in the region of £37 million from our budgets by 2017 to 18. And I have to say that try as we might, this will affect services. This will affect some of the most vulnerable in our communities. Mr Mayor, this will hit hard. And it's important that we here remember that we are having to do this because of the cuts the government are imposing upon us. Not because we want to, and not because we have poorly managed our finances. Indeed, Mr Mayor, for the fourth year running, we have come in on budget, despite significant in-year pressures. And we've maintained reserves at £8 million and we put in place a contingency to meet possible shortfalls in this financial year. Mr Mayor, in order to make these savings, we will have to make the best use of our assets. Now, asset management seems a simple idea, but it's complicated by the Council's need to use the assets that, we, that it has in the best way to benefit local people and the community as a whole. This means, despite the ever-increasing financial pressures, we sometimes have to look at selling or using land without maximising the income from it. The new South Essex College campus opposite is a perfect example. Now, we could have insisted that that town centre site be sold for private housing, and we would have made millions. Instead, we're using it to provide a college that will help thousands of local youngsters to get the skills that they will need to take advantage of the jobs that will be created here over the next few years. On the other hand, there was an advert that members would have seen in last week's local press seeking interest in two possible housing sites uh, for freehold use in Greys, as agreed by the cross-party asset uh, group. On property sales, we're already over halfway to our £7 million target for the end of this financial year, and we're working closely with our partners to secure the best possible value for council taxpayers. Uh, finally, Mr Mayor, communications is an ever more important role as we endeavour to change the way the council works and the way it interacts with the community. We need to explain why we are doing things. It's not change for change's sake. Over recent months, the small communications team has shrunk even further. Yet the demands externally and internally, managing our reputation and people's expectations, creating awareness, fostering engagement, changing perceptions, building and maintaining confidence and trust across the whole wide swathe of our services, have all continued to grow as therapies itself grows. <laughs> Mr Mayor, in the future, explaining what we can do and what we can't do, telling about success successes and admitting to our failures, ensuring that residents understand just why we're having to take the tough decisions that lie ahead will be crucial for all of us. Uh, Mr Mayor, with that, I will endeavour to answer any questions that members may have. However, there doesn't appear to be much mention of the interest saved uh, by borrowing on short-term loans rather than having long-term uh, pegged interest loans. Uh, I'm interested to know, on that we say something between £2 and £4 million a year, 
Could you outline how much of that is now being used for day-to-day -day services rather than being put into uh, one-off programmes to save money in the future? Uh, help us to rebuild reserves so that we didn't have to take money uh, from day-to-day -day revenue to, to, to rebuild reserves. Uh, therefore, I, I can say that all the money that has been saved so far on that is being used now uh, for, for revenue services. Reducing our dependency on external foster care placements, this is something I uh, very wholeheartedly support. Um, however, the, I believe the council may be aware that our permanency figures, the amount of people who foster in the borough and stay in the borough, are very impressive, but our rates of recruitment of new carers aren't as impressive, suggesting that people are happy when they are fostering in Thurrock. However, we don't have droves of people <coughs> coming in, therefore we're leaving the burden of, exp of expensive external placements. The lead of the council has highlighted uh, awareness of our fostering offer under communications. I was wondering how the lead intends to monitor this to ensure it delivers the savings that we both support and need. It's through regular reports that will come uh, to Cabinet, where you know, Cabinet portfolio holders keep a close eye on this, so you know, we hold on with the portfolio holder. Uh, the second thing is through the Children's Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Uh, that will, I'm sure, receive regular updates, and I'm sure that Councillor Howard and his colleagues uh, will not be slow in telling us uh, if we're not meeting our, our target. You know, Paul mentions all different kinds of uh, strategies that you're going to be taking, but you stood in this chamber and promised to look at zero-based budgeting back in 2010, but we still seem to continue to use salami slicing to set our budget. So my question, although twofold, is quite simple. What is your fundamental change that you have in your budget setting? And will you fulfil your promise to consider zero-based budgeting? Use some of the principles of zero-based budgeting. I have to say that full-out zero-based budgeting does not work in a local authority, in my view. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we know that we have to protect vulnerable children. We know that we have to protect vulnerable adults. You don't need to go through zero-based budgeting to, to, to know that and to achieve that. Uh, the other thing I have to say <coughs> is that in six years of the Conservatives running the administration, they didn't go down a route of zero-based budgeting because they know that it doesn't work in local authorities too. With this localisation rate, which seems to have been portrayed as a way of giving councils extra money. But I'd like to understand how it will affect us in the years going forward, what positives we can see, and is, are there any negatives of this scheme? Mr. Mr. Mayor, I, th I think uh, opposition sometimes feel that we have friendly uh, questions planted. If there was a friendly question planted, it wouldn't be that one. Because I have to say that business rate localisation is fiendishly complicated. Uh, but in very broad terms, up and down the country, the government is saying that 50% of any new businesses that start, 50% uh, of the rates that are raised, will be paid back into local government. Uh, at the start of that process, which was back in 2012, I think it was October, November 2012, government assessed each local authority for the uh, amount of business rate it would need to deliver its services. For Thurrock, I think that was £29 million? £29 million. Uh, therefore, every new rate uh, that we raise over that is subject to uh, some levies and some charges to take the money away from Thurrock to give to areas that aren't having the same amount of growth as us. What that means in, in brief terms is that rather than 50% of business rates being kept, by new business rates being kept in Thurrock, we get to keep about 29%. Uh, the flip side of that is that any loss that's incurred, any business that fails, for instance Tilbury Power Station, we have to uh, stump up 50% of that loss. So for Tilbury Power Station, that costs this authority two and a half million pounds uh, every year. It's actually worse than that because the alternative use for Tilbury Power Station was as an inverted commas green power station. Now, the exception to the 50% is if you uh, are a renewable energy provider, then the local authority gets to keep 100% of that business rate. The business rates we would have kept on Tilbury Power Station uh, were somewhere in the region of one and a half million pounds. So actually, government failing to act to save Tilbury Power Station is costing this authority four million pounds a year. Uh, hope that answers the question. Thank you. Um, you say in your report you have helped some well-established sports clubs in the transfer of recreational land. Can you say who these clubs are and how much they've benefited from the transfers? Well, the one that springs immediately to mind is uh, the help that we're giving to Abley Football Club to relocate to Bellas. Uh, I'm afraid that I don't have uh, figures uh, off, off the top of my head, uh, but I will uh, endeavour to get those and to uh, let you have them. Okay. On this item. 
Uh, the severity of the cuts by this Tory-led government are unprecedented. Unprecedented, um, Mr Mayor. This is coming to a question at the end. So, um, as we've indulged others this evening, I hope you indulge me, Mr Mayor, for just a second. This, coupled with the loss of business rates from the closure of Tilbury Power Station, will inevitably have severe impacts on the services. We're not finished there. The Chancellor has announced further cuts of 10% year on year for Forum in the region of £37 million. Pounds. I don't call that salami slicing. When, yeah, okay, will you join with us and try and save some money? Despite these cuts, despite... Okay, Mr Mayor, I'm going to sum up now, okay, just quickly. I'd like to congratulate the portfolio for once again reaching a balanced budget position, although it is with regret that some services will be reduced, if not cut altogether which is not an enviable state of affairs for our borough, and that's because of the cuts uh, foisted on us by this Tory-led government. Where's the Thank question? you, Mr Mayor. Where is the question, Mr Mayor?